Yeah, David and Sherry, uh, rare heads and that they were stable, organized homesteaders. They had pots, pans, cooking utensils, uh, but no kitchen uh, in which to cook for the tribe. What to do? Oh, well, Eddie looks north because uh, he's wondering what's beyond the Baga River. Nobody ever went over there and uh, get a climb over land, head to a beach called Anjuna. And rumor is there's no houses over there at all. Well, finally, an adventurous uh, female Japanese uh, freak uh, climbed the land head. Well, first you had to take the canoe <laughs> across the river. And, uh, yeah, and uh, she follows the faint animal track on the, down the down to Anjuna Beach. <laughs> Sweeping three-kilometer beach of pristine sand. Yeah, I mean, and go on for South Tahiti, uh, this is what she saw. Abundant with palm trees, and <laughs> they've got houses. Uh, and she reported back to Eddie, yeah, there's houses. So uh, Eddie dispatches his number one tracker, Jack, to nail it down and follow in her footsteps to attempt to rent a house. Over there... Quieter really appeals to Eddie. The step and will just kind of get away from the main scene for sure. Yeah, and Jack comes back excited. Uh, showing house kids. Yeah, I just rented a five bedroom house. We can move in right away. And the the caretaker didn't even ask me for the rent up front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eddie's so pleased. Quiet, private, remote home. For him and his friends, yeah. Well, he stays on Baga Beach until uh, New Year's Eve, which happens to be Blind George's birthday. Mm, blind George. Not completely blind. Uh, and the women love Blind George. And we were all very jealous of Blind George because he's got like all these gorgeous women with him all the time. <laughs> well, we got lucky once in a while. Uh, so, uh, after Blind George's New Year's party, which is his birthday also, uh, Eddie heads up, <laughs> heads up and over the hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he marvels, Eddie, at the difference in the freak scene. Remember when he was alone on Culver Beach just a couple of winters ago? Heavy driven girl. Mushrooming wildly, yeah. Well, Eddie starts uh, the new 1970 year uh, by moving into the rented house. And after dinner, uh, Eddie makes his, uh, you know, speech about how he's going to run his house. Uh, remember, all are welcome. All. Unconditionally. I'll not ask you for money. And I'll not ask anybody to do any work in the house. Those who wish to contribute may do so. If there's not enough money after that, I'll provide it, sure. That's how we lived in Kalba last season. That's how we'll do it here. <sighs> well, at this housewarming party, Eddie gives out 40 tabs of LSD to his housemates. <laughs> Personally, Eddie doesn't trip anymore or smoke hash. So he becomes the designated driver through the cosmos. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie lounges calmly on the floor. There's no furniture anyway. Uh, and uh, purely witnesses. The unfolding psychedelic theater. Mm -hmm. Girls sitting, smiling, beatifically. Mm -hmm. Dinner is served. <laughs> Those chapatis come out in weird shapes and sizes. Yeah, all oh, oh. the nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the next morning, Kurt, one of his original 
account follower says, Eddie, look, I'm giving you all my money. I don't want to have anything to do with money anymore. Well, okay, says Eddie, but uh, don't ask for it back later. Oh, don't worry, I won't, says Carco. Yeah. You know, so many people threw their passports into the Arabian Sea and their money and everything. The, uh, David and Sherry would coax them just to uh, <laughs> safeguard it for them. They would hide all their stuff, you know, and then when they came down from their trip, it's like, oh, I got to go back to Sweden. Oh, 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 yeah, I guess we have your passport back here. You need a little of your money maybe to get back to Bombay. Uh, oh, oh, here comes a flip out <laughs> named Ray. Mm -hmm. Haunts the house. Chris isn't pain in the ass. So Eddie's housemates uh, ply him with LSD to upgrade his current energy. <laughs> he remains about as freaked out, but with a pleasant undercurrent <laughs> of happiness. Yeah. Oh, BBC crew finally tracks Eddie down at his Anjuna Beach house. And running camera, following Eddie into the kitchen. He confronts them. Give me $5,000 for an interview or forget it. And BBC guys grumble, though. But Sue come back with, how about $300 for the interview? Forget it. Get out of here. Well, then Eddie notices freaks uh, hanging out in the kitchen. They look so hungry and dispirited. The film crew persists. Look, uh, the sun is going down, and there's only a few more minutes we can shoot. Uh, just a brief interview, please. Uh, okay. Well, of course, they ask Eddie about hippies and drugs and sex and he says, look, there was more sex going on in middle and upper class Los Angeles in the 1950s than there is in Goa. And he ought to know. Uh, as far as drugs, uh, there's more good drug consumption on the streets of London where they come from. Anything else you want to know? 